Hello, my lovely people. Thank you for joining. It's Sunday, and that is Q&A time. So let's go, big one. Today, we're going to be talking about <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff. Proxies, rules versus guides. I will share my portfolio allocations as well and how things get completely out of whack in a bull market and how rules are sometimes for bear markets. We'll talk about wallet security, allocations, 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 pair trading, cutting losers, options, letting winners run, some some of my rules, some of Drucker Miller rules, portfolio building, how to start from scratch, and uh, we'll be touching on stocks, Alibaba, MicroStrategy, Tesla, CleanSpark, Solana, and so much more. So let's go. Thank you, Glenn Joe, for coming. Of course, I'm just a guy on the internet. This is entertainment. It's not, definitely not investment advice. And a shout out as well to everybody in Patreon. Thank you as well. The questions come from Patreon. They don't come from me. And the team manages the questions. So thank you all. Also, tomorrow, quick reminder for those in Patreon, there is a live fireside chat with me at 11 a.m. Pacific. And that will be after, of course, DCA2. So let's go. And a big thank you as well to the team behind the curtain that makes all of this possible every single day. Heavy, 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 heavy lift. So very first question is from I apologist. With this early action in Bitcoin proxies, my minor and microstrategy positions have become uncomfortably large compared to my spot Bitcoin and overall equity holdings. Miners alone account for about 30% of my overall equity and crypto holdings, and I've sold the laggards already. I don't want to pivot too early, but am I breaking personal rules by not rebalancing? I was thinking of pivoting uh, some profits to alts and Tesla. Play it safe or let it ride. So this is such an important question, and I too suffer from this. So I'm going to go through a set of rules and guidelines that I follow and how certain rules, of course, get modified or get skewed because of crazy market situations. First of all, kind of like my old proverb, you've heard me say this many times, focus on the 1%, cut the losers, let the winners run, let the winners ride, whatever. They're kind of things you always need to think about. Probably the most important thing is having that focus on the best assets. I do extraordinary amount of work to tease out winners. I analyze, literally, if I analyze 100 tokens or 100 stocks, I only want to find one. I'm not looking for 10 or 15. One. I pick the best one. And you'll see that pattern in all of my choices as well, especially in a few minutes. So first of all, rules and guidelines. The rules are guidelines. And this is a funny little meme. Uh, it's more than what you call a guideline uh, than an actual rule. So I just thought that was funny. I couldn't really find anything trying to reflect. But again, when I say don't lend out your crypto, more than 10% of your crypto, that certain thing I mean, don't invest more than 10% in Bitcoin miners, especially when they're very risky during the bear market. That's what I mean. But then when a winner explodes, that goes out the window. That's kind of what I'm stressing here. So let's talk about allocations for a second. The importance of allocation in the bear is really to avoid excessive risk exposure because things like miners, etc., you don't know which way they're going to go. Things like old coins, you don't know which way they're going to go. But when you do what find the winners, that's when you stack them. You stack them well because, you know, if they do run, they will become exponential. And exponential returns on investments during bull markets highlighted by our successes in the community with things like MicroStrategy, Solana, CleanSpark can significantly skew or alter portfolio allocations. And adhering to my other principle of let winners run, accepting the resulting imbalance in portfolio distribution is par for the course, ladies and gentlemen. Also, the largest holding in my portfolio now this is kind of crazy, and I'll share it with you, is MicroStrategy. And this was a tiny position, as was Solana, a tiny position. I think a year ago, Solana was 5% of my portfolio. <laughs> now it's a lot bigger. MicroStrategy was like a tiny piece, but due to the power of options, it became monstrous. My biggest position today is MicroStrategy by far, and yes, it completely dominates my Bitcoin position, just like you, Mr. Apologist. So 
It's okay. Now let's talk about a couple of other rules. You have my rules. Let's talk to one of the legends in the space, Stanley Druckenmiller. I did share this on Patreon earlier in the week, and I thought it was very appropriate to bring up again. He is a well-known investor with a wonderful reputation for his strategy and long-term success. But he has kind of, I kind of break this quote down. I'll read the quote and then pull out the five rules that I see. One, to build superior long-term returns is through preservation of capital and home runs. So don't lose your entire bag on a risk, but if you get a home run, stay in it. And when you have tremendous conviction on a trade, you have to go for the jugular. And also the final part, it takes courage to be a pig. So let me try to break this down and how I interpret it as well. So it does provide a lot of insight into his approach to investing, which is not dissimilar to mine at all. And by the way, I've studied all the great investors for over 30 years. So maybe they've, I don't know, uh, I've been absorbed into them or the way they think. So pres preservation of capital, critical. Uh, you should avoid unnecessary risks that could lead to large losses. Also, don't sit on losers. That's another element I would add to that too. Uh, protecting investment capital is a priority and ensure that money is available to invest when good opportunities present themselves. I always have a little bit of cash on hand in case there is a screaming deal. Home runs. These are investments that yield exceptionally high returns. I have a one option trade that's running up to like a thousand X right now. It's kind of completely insane, but that's what happens. Meta last year was the same, Nvidia. Some of these things are just home run after home run after home run. And these score big, big life-changing returns. And that's what we're trying to do here. But again, don't risk your capital to YOLO into these home runs. But sometimes you get a whole bunch of them at the same time which is amazing. And that conviction as well, having a very high belief or confidence in a particular trade or investment, that's me and Solana, that's me and Tesla, that's me and Bitcoin, that's me and NVIDIA, that's me and MicroStrategy. I spend years finding the winners and then I go for the jugular. This is the idiom that means you target the most crucial area for a decisive victory. And in investing, that's having high conviction in an investment and just go in hard and get in early. And the other piece as well, the courage to be a pig. We know pigs are the most intelligent animals out there, they say. And it is a derogatory term, so sorry for using it. But however, Drucker Miller flips the term on its head, suggesting that sometimes being greedy when you have strong conviction in an opportunity is okay. Okay, so that's how he kind of, how I think he thinks about it. I'd love to interview him one day. That would be incredible. Anyway, so uh, Mr. Apologist, yes, you're fine. Let the winners ride. Don't pivot just yet, but you'll see when I pivot. And uh, hopefully we have a little bit longer runway to stack one of our favorite assets, which has become a very small asset as well. So as the other ones rise, the ones that you had a big bag of kind of automatically allocate themselves to. It's another important rule as well. So next question from T. Brogan. I just fired my financial advisor, i.e. Edward Jones, and decided to direct my own Roth IRA using the knowledge you've instilled in me. My transfer completed on Saturday, yesterday, and by evening, I had my traps set. Good, you lay your traps. Monday, the markets oh, went bonkers. This must be last week. I'm in FOMO mode, especially with Bitcoin having quickly approaching. Should I jump in or wait for things to hopefully mean revert? And uh, that's FBTC, that's the Fidelity Bitcoin ETF, Tesla, Clean Spark, and MicroStrategy. Well, it's extremely difficult to know exactly where the markets are going to go. But you need to take the emotion out of decision making. And that FOMO that you've highlighted, you are well aware of it. And do not let that control when you hit the deploy button. So let's look at some recent trades that I made and how I made them. So first of all, my sniping target on CleanSpark last week, 15 bucks 80, that was layer seven on the layer in layer out model. I use this to find support and resistance levels. And then I go in and if we fall to say something like 1150, you go in three times harder. That's how I use this. And the opposite is for the same for profit taking, which we'll get to profit taking real soon too. Um, now I have bought CleanSpark three times in three major, major bags. First of all, it was like between two and three bucks. Second of all, was about $6.80, only about three and a half, four weeks ago. And third time was fifteen eighty. So again, I wait for the opportunity. By the way, it came down from 24 bucks to that level. Nailed the bottom, 
trade alert will prove that as well. Uh, and that was a big buy. So that's how I do it. It's kind of do things in threes, big buys, heavy conviction, go for the jugular. And I know this thing will do very well during the bull market. Second one, micro strategy. It hit 666 using a combination of tools, Arb Cloud, and this is again a layer in, layer out model. And you can see here it hit layer eight, and that was kind of crazy. I had four orders in. They all missed. One of them missed by a dollar because I happened to be streaming a video at the same time for uh, another group. But anyway, you can't catch them all. You move on. But the point is, uh, it was uh, it, it's just hard to believe that within a week, this thing goes from 666 to $1,100. That's why we love it. And then f finally, the trades of the week as well. Tesla. You can see here, IDCA, I bought at 175, I bought at 180, and I bought at 198 yesterday or on Friday. So that's kind of how I do it. And I use that using the DCAS model, DCAS strategy. It tells you the loads you're supposed to go in at. So it's like if you're allocating 100 bucks a week, it'll tell you to do 2.8, 2.9 times, depending on the time. And you do not buy during squeezes or downturns. It'll wait for it to bottom and uh, make sure, kind of, in many cases, not to really buy at the top. It takes a lot of the decision making out of it. And when you have things like DCAS, the layer model, ARB Cloud all together, you can get a really good picture for where the market's going and what are the good times to buy. And don't don't feel under pressure. You know, we know that it's 45 days to the halving, but there will be volatility. And right now, as I check, we have Bitcoin trading at 62.7. So it did go up 750 bucks today. It's banging on the door of that 63K, and we know we're very close to all-time highs, and then it'll be price discovery. So um, hang tough, don't feel under pressure, and also let the markets determine how you allocate. So I buy based on relative value. If I find something really cheap, as we did yesterday, just buy it. Uh, but don't necessarily, keep your options open is what I'm trying to say. Next question is from Justin B. According to you, one should not store more than 10% of their portfolio in a wallet. Does this imply one should have 10 wallets? Uh, seems like a lot. How many should be cold wallets? So again, this is a great question. And this is why we'll use this liberally today. Rules are guidelines, okay? It's more nuanced than that. I always try and give people an easy thing that they can hang on to. But let's break this down as to how I view security and wallets, etc. First of all, uh, it is a function of your portfolio size and portfolio complexity. How many assets, what type of tokens, what type of wallets you need. Not all wallets support all tokens. And if your portfolio is relatively small, and managing 10 wallets is overkill and unnecessary. But if you have a larger portfolio, and I'll, you know, it could be $100,000 or less or $100,000 or more. I don't know what the number is. $10,000 depends on you, but 10 wallets for $10,000 complete overkill. Larger portfolios, however, diversification is needed across several wallets, and that makes more sense. And you might not need 10, but the exact number of wallets should align with your comfort level, the size of your portfolio, and your ability to securely manage these wallets. That's why I also say, if you are not confident in your OPSEC and the management of cold storage, buy an ETF. It's that simple. Bitcoin maxes go mad for me for saying that. But literally, it's, you know, for the sake of the fees, which are non-existent, it's a safer play for many people out there. And we know, because we're on the receiving end of people losing their keys, sending money, sending Bitcoin to the wrong addresses, etc. It's crazy. So let's talk about cold versus hot wallets. Quick reminder here, cold wallets are not connected to the internet and offer the highest security. They're air-gapped. Uh, for storing crypto. Uh, examples of include hard wallets, paper wallets, etc. And given their security benefits, a significant portion of your assets, especially long-term holdings, should be stored in cold wallets. Now, hot wallets, these are connected to the internet, and they're very convenient for day-to-day -day transacting and trading, but are less secure compared to cold wallets, and only keep amounts you might need for short-term trades or payments in hot wallets. Do not keep your big bags there as well. So next, we'll talk about allocations. Again, allocations, we talk a lot about today. You might not need 10 wallets, for example, but an example approach, just 
theoretical approach, your major holdings could be across two or three cold wallets. For the majority, we're talking 80% of your investments, maybe 85, 90%. Then your active trading, one to two hot wallets could even be more with sub wallets. Sub wallets are important uh, for active trading. But if somebody gets access to your main wallet, they could drain all your sub wallets too. An experimentation wallet, one wallet for new speculative investments or to try out new platforms, that's okay too. So think about kind of those three categories and allocate accordingly. And when you do those, you get to 10 pretty quickly as well. So um, there's one other thing as well. Remember security, regardless of the number of wallets, prioritize strong passwords, unique passwords for each wallet. Keep backup phrases in a secure offline and separate location and regularly update software and firmware. We prefer open source software as well and consider using multi-sig wallets for added security as well. So just some quick tips and guidelines. We have a whole wallet security playlist. Go search for it in Vast Answers Security and you'll see it all there, including we have reviewed pretty much every wallet under the sun. And it's an objective review because we don't care what you use, but we identify the best and we don't sell any wallets. We don't shill any wallets. Okay, very important. Next question from Sammy. I feel like this is not a YouTube channel. It's a course I'm taking because of how much I'm learned. So honored. I own shares in both CleanSpark and MicroStrategy, and I want to buy some option calls. As we are getting closer to having, I notice some calls go higher than others. Which calls would you recommend? And tips on how to choose a good call option. Very good. As you know, I primarily trade in options only. And that's kind of my DNA, my background, but I'll break down a couple of things to look for. And then we'll talk about some of the bad options news too. Uh, but you got to understand the asset you're investing in, clean spark, micro strategy, understand like we covered before, where they are in the cycle, where they are in the models, when to layer in, etc. Also know the market conditions. Uh, for example, um, you've got to really watch what's happening. If something is spiking, or something is incredibly volatile, the options will cost you a fortune. I'll talk about that. That's when you sell them, you don't buy them, okay? In addition, you've got to get familiar. If you are playing options, a lot of people kind of want to get into trade options and they're thinking, oh, it's easy. I see him doing it, it's no problem. But unless you really understand the Greeks and how they work, do not touch them. So delta is how much the price of an option is expected to move based on a dollar change in the actual asset. Higher delta means the option is more likely to move in tandem with the stock, okay? Theta is time decay. I love this. This is what I love to sell. Options lose value as they approach expiration. And consider options with slow rate of time decay, which means you go out long. Also, the more time you have, the more sure you are you can be right. And vega is the sensitivity to volatility. You want to look at this as well. I sell high high volatility options with high vegas all the time also look at liquidity um options interest open interest and volume high open interest and trading volumes indicate liquidity making it easy not only to enter and exit there was a time in early 2023 it took me literally nearly two weeks to fill my options position on clean spark i was all the volume all of it there was nobody else, there was nobody selling, there was nobody buying the type of things I was looking at. And then there was no liquidity. So if I was looking to sell those things, I wouldn't be able to. But anyway, I got them eventually, but it took a long time. So watch liquidity carefully. Now, rules of thumb, these are mine, and this is not financial advice, buy at least 12 to 18 months out, a year, year and a half, sometimes even more, buy half intrinsic value, half time value. So if you have a strike, imagine, Imagine the stock is at 100 bucks, okay? And you are buying that. You want to get like a $90 strike. You want to always buy an option out long-term, but in the money, okay? You don't want to buy out of the money. That's what you sell. You buy in the money. Uh, so imagine you buy a $90 strike. The price is 20 bucks. You'll have $10 of intrinsic value. That is $10 in the money. That's how much the actual option is worth. Nobody can take that away from you, unless, of course, the price tanks below 100 and the other $10 is time value. So half, half. 
as a guideline. That's how I like to play it. And it's a real simple rule, but it really works. Now, the bit of bad news here at MicroStrategy Options, due to the crazy volatility, I mean, we went from $666 to 1100 bucks in a week. <laughs> it's nuts. And that's reflected in the price here, okay? Quick quiz. What would this be in terms of the Greek? Which Greek drives these prices high? I'll give you a clue. It begins with V, okay? That's what you need to look for here. So if I was using my approach of half intrinsic value, half time value, literally you'd be spending a fortune, like you're looking at the 900s or the 800s, and you can see they're very, very expensive. Nearly $600 for the $900 calls. Uh, the at-the-money calls are 500 bucks. They make no sense to buy. At the, when it gets to this level, you're better off just buying the actual stock on margin. Put 50% down, like 500 bucks, 550 bucks, and borrow 50% and let it ride. It's better than the options. Or you can sell these and do a cover call, which is also very lucrative. So get familiar with your Greeks. Um, remember, paper trade them first. And 90% of people who play with options lose. And they lose to people like me. So be careful. Remember, the other thing I always say is remember who you don't think there's anybody on the other side of the trade. You think it's just a machine or a market or something. No, somebody like me. So if somebody's selling you something, ask yourself why. All right. Very important. And that goes for anything in life, too. Next is from Moo Moo Fluffy Pants. Ha, ah, what a fun name. With the bull market underway and Bitcoin miners extremely priced volatility, would you consider shorter term options, say three months, or would you still recommend one to two year leaps? Looking at the CleanSpark $20 strike, June expiry. No, I bought CleanSpark options this week, $15. Okay, that was a strike. I was in the money. Very important. I also sold some too at the same time. The rule of thumb, always sell short-term options do not buy them and buy long-term options aka 12 to 18 months or a leap buying short-term is pure speculation and the price is just not worth it as well over time so those two option questions kind of dr drill into each other very nicely this is from gias um why do you never day trade swing trade and you have the perfect tools for it i would assume that you could easily double your bags with your experience or you do it, but never post about it. So uh, that's interesting. Interesting question. I do everything openly and trans transparently with the community. And that's what I promised from the get-go. So day trading, I used to do it in the 90s, but I found it very stressful and time consuming. I didn't have the time. But uh, I also found as well, winning odds are far higher when I have more time, like swing trading, looking at three to four month windows, etc. And my optimal trading window is a four hour time frame. That's what I've honed in on for over a quarter of a century, nearly 30 years. And I find it very good. Now, that being said, I do have a new tax free account that is nicely funded. And I'll be doing more using PTOS with Tesla Teslac and Sol 3x long, Sol 3x short. But there's so much to do. And we're also developing a ton of stuff behind the scenes. And that's sucking up a lot of my time. But if I was locked in a cave, just day trading, Wow, that'd be fun. <laughs> and you're right, the tools are designed for that. And uh, just check out the community, the results that some people are getting too. Pretty impressive. So let's go uh, from George69. Since Bitcoin is tweaking all-time highs, the Bitcoin Sol pair looks perfect to transfer some Bitcoin into Sol. Or would this be crazy as Bitcoin could be approaching price discovery pre-halving? Now, this is a great question. And I think about this all the time. And again, one of my other rules is, I've got to do a video on all the rules, but one is don't be too cute in the market. Therefore, again, for the third time today, I'll say allocations matter. Set your traps and wait. Don't try and time stuff too fast. So let's talk about the Sol Bitcoin pair. Now, this is Sol divided by Bitcoin. When it's positive and up over the last year, year and a half, uh, you can see that Sol has outperformed Bitcoin by 283%. In addition, talking about the Lila model again, you'll see here it bounced perfectly off that layer 7. That is a kind of a support layer for the pair. And that would be at 0 0.00188. So if you see it down here again, yes, consider moving Bitcoin into Sol. I do believe, I do believe... Solana will outperform Bitcoin, but 
But I also believe Bitcoin is going to have a great, great year. Now, I always say this, as the crypto market cap goes up, it's a rising tide, it'll float all boats, even crappy tokens, they'll go up as well. Everything will go up. The question is, what is the rate that they would go up at? How will they outperform? And so far, as you can see here from this chart, Solana has completely smoked Bitcoin. And Bitcoin has, I think as Bitcoin is up 210%, but even with that, Solana still vastly outperformed it too. So let's look at um, a related chart too, because a lot of people talk about when will uh, the actual all-time high happen for Solana from DFTU 2024? Uh, is it expected by the end of 2024? So it's very hard to say when. Uh, it is a function of a couple of things, but I can share with you this. Again, this is our famous Sol upside model. And here you have all your different market caps. One of the ones that I think is a shoe in it's an easy get, is for the Sol market cap to be 20% of ETH. It was there in December 2023. It's not there now. But if it was there now, Solana would be trading at 190 bucks, not 130. Okay, that's 60 bucks upside. Now, all Ethereum needs to do is go up 31% from where the price is right now, just shy of 3,500. That takes it to $4,500. And if Sol is at 20% of ETH market cap, we are there. And remember as well, for those who'll say, oh, well, it's not really the all-time high because there's dilution. Correct, yes, there's dilution. Uh, but at the same time, people don't think that way. They think 250 all-time high beats the all-time high. They look at gold the last 14 years, they look at 2100, all-time high, they think 2100. They don't calculate debasement because that's a very fuzzy number depending on who you're talking to. So again, Solana all-time high will hit as soon as Ethereum hits 4,500 and 20% of ETH market cap. There's other calculations I have as well regarding percentage of CMC, you know, the Sol dominance and where the CMC goes and easy targets. I'll be doing more around targets as well, for updated for all of these things. But saying exactly when, I don't know. But by year end, I would imagine easy, easy, easy get indeed, especially considering things like the ETH ETF that's coming too. And again, that rising tide will float all boats. And again, remember, the smaller the asset, the more it outperforms, okay? It takes a lot less power to lift something that's a billion dollars than something that's a trillion dollars. So think about that too. All right, next question. Thank you all for the great questions. This is stuff I think about all the time. And thank you as well to the mods in the chat, TND, Tesla, and K8, and, and Crypto Cruiser, everybody's here. I have a large bag of Sol, and I'm a whole coiner. Excellent. And I like the way you hid your real name because you don't want anybody to know who you are. <laughs> First time home buyer and closing in November 2024. So that gives you, what's that, eight months? Uh, I want to put in a good amount of a deposit and take profits at some point since my Solana bag has done well. A good target prices and some profit this year and layer out. My fear is that I'll wait too long and profits and then run the risk of Solana retracing. So I like the way you're thinking. There's a couple of things you do need to layer out. We've got a whole methodology. We've got the Lilo model. We have uh, Google spreadsheets behind it. Determine exactly what you want. So there's a couple of rules you need to really consider because this is going to be absolutely critical for you to nail. And also sandbag a lot. All right. You've got to set your target prices. Again, use the Solana upside model that I've that I've just showed you as well to establish your price targets for taking profits. And these should be based on Solana's performance and trends and in comparison to Ethereum. Also, monitor Solana dominance. Pay close attention to Sol's dominance in the market as indicated by the model. And an increase in dominance might suggest waiting for a higher target price too. Also, while a, a decrease could indicate a good time to start layering out as well. Remember, keep your tap dancing shoes because we don't know when something's going to pop or retrace. Also, use the daily time frame analysis. This is best for the model's design and for trading for this type of purpose. Make it a habit to check these indicators daily, and this will help you stay aligned with Sol's current market position and adjust your exit strategy as needed. If the market changes, if there's a black swan or something, that may mean you have to layer out fast. Um, 
but instead it's better to layer out gradually use the discipline use the model identify how much you want to put down as a down payment and instead of your sold, selling your holdings all at once considering layering, layering out your profits and this means setting several price targets and selling a portion of your holdings as each target is reached and this can mitigate the risk of Sol's price retracing significantly before you take any profits as well also prepare for market events watch i always say keep your head out the window watch what's happening in the macro watch what's happening at the fed watch what's happening in the war zones watch what's happening in elections watch what's happening in congress these are all very very important as well and uh, risk management given your fear of waiting too long and risking a retracement define very clear rules for yourself sandbag so what i mean by that is imagine you're buying let's say a million dollar home for simplicity just a million dollars and you want to put 20 percent down you're going to need 200 grand factor in you only 300 and then once you get to 200 then you're comfortable then you can let the rest ride okay so it's better to take more out early considering the home purchase than waiting as well so i hope those those things help get the sol upside model get the lilo model get familiar with the spreadsheet and discourse put in your numbers and take all emotion out of it set your targets set your goals of how much you want to get and then you're good to go uh, next question alibaba from k carlos now uh, seems alibaba is in an oversold territory in a downtrend from october 2020 could you go through the fundamentals of the company streams of revenue and upside potential considering holding the stock in a long-term horizon and would you consider a buy around 60 bucks or at the break of the downtrend so in full disclosure I did buy Baba recently at its bottom. Let's look at the ATR model. ATR model is great for determining macro trends of an asset. That's what it was designed for. Also layers. So it has a whole bunch in here. It's got buy and sell signals, it's layers. We're looking at layer one now, and that's where Baba is hovering. And that is an extremely su strong support level. If it breaches that, it's typically a buy. Now, if you are a frenetic swing trader and you're willing to do 75 trades in two and a half years uh you can actually make a lot of money that way too this would be a good tool for a retirement account but basically you can triple your bag by doing 30 trades a year <laughs> uh, using this particular model now it will go a lot higher we just don't know when so let's look at some of the fundamentals i'm not going to do a deep stock analysis because that would take way too long but they do have extremely good revenue growth, all right? Uh, and although the profit growth below, it's kind of sandbagged, it's kind of based on uh, analyst expectations, but it still is going up a lot. It's going up by 60% over the next two years. Um, it is also trading at about 55% below our estimate of its fair value. Earnings are growing at 13% per year, and earnings grew by 205% last year. You can see they took the dip, and that's kind of what impacted the price sometimes as well it takes the markets time to trust and get comfortable with an asset again plus china has been hammered but the chinese government is going to increase money printing and liquidity and money supply and it's going to float all boats just like the crypto market cap so i do expect this one to pop that's why i got into a position this is also from guru focus and uh, they believe it's also undervalued it should be trading at at least 103 dollars and it's currently trading at around 70, I think, last time I looked. So uh, absolutely. But remember, Chinese stocks are very, very risky. Uh, just to put things in perspective, by the way, um, <laughs> give you an idea of my allocation. You cannot even see my BABA allocation on this chart. I am 94% in just five names. And that covers all crypto, all equities. Again, allocations matter. I go hard. I go for the jugular, as Stanley would say, Stanley Druckenmiller. I uh, have very high conviction, very few assets. That's how you win. So for me, it's a speculation, but I would not trust a big, like not even 1% of my bag in Alibaba as well. So remember that every allocations matter. Pick the 1%, ride them. <laughs> and if the thesis change, get off very important cut the losers fast and favorite part of the week everybody and we'll open up some questions helping animals uh, this is serious she is roughly a 12 year old uh, wolf dog 
and his owners could not keep his sister Katana, so Wild Spirit Wolf Sanctuary took him and his sister in so they could remain together. So we're keeping the family together, everybody, which is awesome. And tomorrow, DCA has a very special guest called Mando. And those of you who know Mando, I did an interview with him on Real Vision. At the same time, I was trying to close that microstrategy trade at 666. This guy knows his stuff. It'll be great to see the, the combination and the chemistry between CTO and Mando and myself. And we're going to cover everything tomorrow here on this channel, 7.30 a.m. Pacific, 4.30 Central European time. And it's going to be a fun show. So uh, thank you all for coming. Open up some questions now. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. It's appreciated. Uh, the As I've been saying for years, this is the most important time to be in the markets. We may not get a bull market like this again. I've been saying this for years. This is, you know, with AI and markets and crypto, we may never see a market like this again, everybody. So strap in and enjoy and don't sell too soon, okay? That's uh, kind of some advice that I give there as well. So let's uh, go to some questions. Let me pop this up. The live Q&A slide. And a big thank you once again to the mods in the chat and everybody for being here. And Adam Q and everybody else. Well, lots of questions today. Oh, wow. Um, cool. Let's just jump in. We go through this fast as well. Um, this is from Wasn't Meme. Uh, Soul Chat was 40 cents yesterday. It's currently $6.50. I made $5,000 thanks to James, my hero. <laughs> well done for Soul Chat. Yeah, we we look we look for these special assets and um, we go through our rigorous methodology and we we find treasures, but they're few and far between. Everybody, we got to dig through a hundred to find one. Remember that. Uh, WCK, uh, thanks to the the saw chat uh, call. Keep them up. We do, but again, they're few and far between. And this is the time for these, but a year from now we won't have that as well. Nick M, my 11-year-old daughter loves to watch you and she loves Bitcoin. That's awesome. Awesome. Uh, kids investing early. There's nothing more important. It gives them such an important perspective on life. Make them work to earn. Don't give any kid free money. My father never gave me any money. I had to work to earn every penny in my life. If I wanted a bicycle, I had to work for it. And uh, that's a very good discipline for your kids to have. And then to invest that money, not spend it on a bicycle. <laughs> Oh, I sound so boring. Anyway, Charles Kincannon. Uh, at this stage of the cycle, where would you put Tesla as a place for dry powder versus crypto, etc.? So right now, um, my Tesla position, uh, we had a beautiful year last year buying in the low 100s. Um, built a big bag. I still layer in because uh, the Tesla position has shrunk a lot relative to other assets crypto has gone through the roof and the bitcoin proxies have gone absolutely bonkers and insane and i'm in heavily leveraged positions so uh, i don't mind kind of any any whatever i have dry powder i have i allocate to things like microstrategy or clean spark or crypto solana sol chat etc that type of stuff like yesterday um again per what i discussed the layers are so important. Pick your moments. Wait. Be that sniper in the woods. When they hit layers, you grab a little bit and you wait. But also regarding Tesla, it's the only asset that, yes, it's up 100% since a year ago. But still, compared to the IA narrative stocks, it hasn't really moved yet. But it will. It will. And that gives us more time to get in early as well. Because... It will have that chat GPT moment. An FSD, I tweeted something last night, how good it is. You could never code what that neural net driving can do. It drives better than somebody with 50 years of driving experience. It is absolutely mind-blowing and few understand it and they're right there. And that's on top of 11 other chat GPT moments this company's going to get. It's going to be special. So just be patient, Charles, and wait. Um... In the meantime, enjoy crypto and Bitcoin proxies. Debased. I'm in ETH, SOL, and PLS ecosystems. What is your prediction for ETH and SOL this cycle? Um, I'm not even sure what a PLS ecosystem is. I think I know, but I won't mention it because they go mad when I do. Anyway, I don't like um, forks of ETH. I don't like layer twos on ETH. I'll be very 
open about that. I think there's a lot more money to be made on the undervalued consensus trade, and we all know what the name of that is. Um, where, where they top this cycle, I think, based on my recent models, Solana will go to 360. Uh, I think ETH could go 5000 to 7000 dollars and you know it's 30 percent to 4500 right now once it gets to 4500 it can easily get to 5000 and once it gets above a big number like that it can it can go run but remember as eth runs it'll raise all boats and uh, as i showed you as well how solana's up for in bitcoin solana has completely smoked ethereum and last week uh, solana was trading at 12 and a half percent of the market cap of eth last week and that's dramatically undervalued for what it does uh, JG, let's go. Yes, let's go. It's going to be a fun one. Crypto Creme, thank you so much for continually sharing such great alpha. Loving the channel and the community. Yes, and keep the good, good stuff coming. I will. We work around the clock to make sure we can. And Courage the Cowardly Dog, uh, say you step out of DGen zone and execute the impossible. You buy low, sell high. Where to keep powder long term? Which stablecoin cold wallet? So um, I'm not a DGen, but what I do like, the reason I do the Sol alts, is I look for an analog from the past that did really success, was really successful in the last bull run on Ethereum, or something like an analog like WhatsApp or WeChat, and find the Web3 version of it that's running on Solana, because I do believe everything will run on Solana for now, until there's a better chain, and there is no better chain yet. Uh, in terms of where we go, I would rotate. I don't like holding cash. I'll hold it, but only for a short window of time, like maybe a month and a half, three months, uh, or use it as margin to sell puts. Um, that's what I like to do, or rotate it into an asset that hasn't pumped yet. So I'm continually, you know, when the time comes, when things get too frothy, too hot, I will rotate to things that are undervalued. And that's kind of the whole game. So in terms of stable coins, a little USDC, a little USDT. Depends on the asset I want to pair trade with, what I look at. So it doesn't really matter. The stable coins are all, all fine. BTC Maxi, Mr. Mike, I wanted to congratulate you strong women here on Mrs. Cole Brower's second place finish on our nonstop around the world global sailing challenge. Wow, that's incredible. I'm a sailor and uh, I don't watch TV or I haven't caught up with sporting events at all. But that's incredible to sail around the world single-handed, non-stop. Wow. Very, very imp Nobody knows how hard it is even just to run a boat on your own for a few hours. It's the most physical, draining, scary thing. You need to concentrate 24-7. So that's very impressive. Um, Mr. Shake, uh, my solo bag is now 15% of my solo bag which is 50% whales market, 25% is flux beam and Lefinity respectively. Currently I am on break even with Sol alts. As NFA, would you suggest rebalancing current or swapping into other Sol alts? Uh, yeah, so I'm one of the Sol alts that has been a huge uh, money maker for me after Sol chat yesterday is um, uh, Nosana. You need uh, kind of an AI play in there. Um, also, last week I did buy some Jupiter on a dip. Again, based on layers. Um, I do like Fluxbeam. I love the rewards. I do like Whales. I love the revenue sharing. Um, so there are good ones. Lefinity will do well once the DEX volume increases. But um, I think you're a little bit too heavy in Whales, I would say. 50% Whales. Um, I'm probably that in another name as well so yeah mix it up and again with the soul alts they're all very very risky and that's one thing where i do a little more diversification so like spread it around set my traps buy things low and then sit and wait wait for them to explode and many of them will as well in the next year or so viciously i've it's been a wild ride through the different market cycles, but it's been a pleasure gaining alpha with the IFM. Let's go. Yes, it's been a, a fun ride indeed. And the last year and a half has been incredible. It went from the darkest time ever to within weeks, a great time. And then the last 13, 15 months has been amazing. Doc Intern, MicroStrategy has had a massive run up ET, uh, better than the ETFs. It seems oversold based on the arbitrage model. That's the IA ARB cloud. 
Do you expect a correction soon or do you expect it to continue to beat ETFs and gains? Yeah, well, that's the whole thesis from day one. And I've been trading MicroStrategy since literally September 2020. They bought first in the middle of August 2020. And uh, ARB is kind of part of what I do. And I always found it fascinating. The wild card now for MicroStrategy is not so much the ARB card. It's the fact that everybody knows it has to be added to the S&P 500. They're profitable. They have the requisite market cap. I think they're ranked number 465 out of the top 500 companies based on market cap. They have to be added. When that happens, you will get a huge pop in price. That's what people are waiting for. They know it's coming. The insiders know. And that's why you're seeing extraordinary uh, gains in microstrategy. It's been mind-blowing. Um, so, you know, the markets will determine what goes on. I'll try to figure out what the scuttlebutt is on Wall Street, if there's any talk of them being added soon. But I do expect them to be added sometime this year. Unless, of course, the S&P 500 is corrupt. We know that they kept uh, Tesla at bay for the longest time. So you never know what happens behind the curtains. But that's a uh, that's what I believe could continue as well. And Dragon 183. Oh, by the way, um, as Bitcoin goes up in value, it forces more people to buy shares because of indexes and funds, etc. And it becomes this big, beautiful, self-fulfilling prophecy. It's great to watch it play out. Dragon 183. My favorite time of the day. Because of you, I've been able to move my retirement up a few years. Awesome. That's the whole plan. Uh, be free so you can enjoy life. And give back whenever possible too. TBA, how on earth do you create so much alpha? Do you sleep? Not enough. No. <laughs> thank you, TBA and Clint C. Uh, thank you. Always been awesome. Thank you, everybody, for being. But please, no more, no more. Thank yous at all. Um, and I want to thank Andy Hudson, the dog, Glenn Joe, Sir Winston, Sigma One Hundred Three. These are good times, but we have to stay humble. Have to stay focused. Have to keep our head out the window. Watch what's going on all the time in the markets in the macro, in crypto, and keep analyzing all the stuff that's going on because it's a crazy world out there as well. So uh, let me see. And Jimmy Neal, Adam Q, Dog One, Seaman, and Lena, thank you to the mods in chat. Hope you enjoy the show. 5,000 people watching live. Love it. Hit the like on the way out, everybody. And I'll see you all tomorrow morning early with Mando and CTO, the two O's. <laughs> Bye, everybody.